Hola, and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including DuckTales, which we'll be talking about today. Uh, I'm your host, Alex Bonilla, and I'm joined, as usual, by Michelle Ander. Hello. And Steve Zeck. Hello. Uh, today, we are discussing, uh, as we are wont to do, the latest two episodes of DuckTales, uh, Storkiles and Duckburg, and Last Christmas are the episodes that we get to talk about today. Um, if you want to catch up on previous discussions that we've had about DuckTales, you can search for that at OverlyAnimated.com. You can also subscribe to our podcast on iTunes at OverlyAnimated.com slash iTunes. You can find us on YouTube at YouTube.com slash OverlyAnimated. And uh, wherever you listen to us, we always appreciate any ratings or reviews you want to leave us. But yeah, today we are talking about these uh, two episodes. Storkleys and Duckburg aired a couple of weeks ago, and Last Christmas just aired uh, this weekend. Since December one obviously means, hey, begin all the all the holiday Christmas. episodes, all the Christmas. <laughs> you, stuff. You know, yeah, so we we have that to talk about, and I, I think there's there's a lot to talk about in, in these two ep- episodes. So let's begin as usual with the general thoughts. Uh, how, how did you guys feel about these two episodes? Uh, Michelle, you go first. So I'm trying, it was very hard this time to pick a favorite just because I really love Storkules and his bond with Donald so much. So I've, I've decided Storkules and Duckbird is overall a more fun, like enjoyable romp, whereas Last Christmas is more kind of serious and plot focused and feelsy and tender. And those are very different strengths. And so I think they're equally good (laughs) for different reasons, which is my like obvious thing all the time when I can't choose. But no, honestly, like I think these are both pretty fun episodes and very enjoyable to watch. I continue to be really like surprised by how good the animation is just like on a technical level, but these are really well animated episodes you guys just the show is really really high caliber <laughs> all right uh, so, so it seems you're high on these two apps uh, um steve uh, what about you how, how do you feel about them oh i i agree with michelle i like them both um really hard to choose but normally what i choose i just choose which one had more donald and these two both <laughs> have donald so <laughs> fair <laughs> yeah um yeah i i really like as uh, storkides and duckburg um it's kind of cool having Donald kind of have like a roommate. It kind of reminds me of some of these old cartoons with seeing him interact with people like his cousin Gus or Goofy or, of course, what we saw recently, Jose and Panchito. So that's always fun. And the heartbeats were kind of cool. I love how Webby was able to train them. That's kind of neat. And yeah, as, as for you, last Christmas, that, I think I'm going to go on a limb here. I think that's probably, as turned to quality, overall quality, is the best episode of season two so far. Oh. And and, and Disney, man, I tell you what, Disney, between this and Elena of Avalar have really surprised me with these plot-progressing Christmas episodes. I, they caught me off guard because, you know, when we have these holiday episodes, you can just relax, take a break. You don't expect much, like, plot progression or anything. Mm-hmm. But Disney is sort of breaking that mold this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's interesting that you come with the claim that Last Christmas is the best of season two. Because I, I, I am also, I think, in that boat. And I, I would almost say, like, this is the second best episode of the year. Like, yeah. I, I really love Last Christmas, yeah. to be on. Like, uh-huh. Storkulis is a, is actually a fun episode. But I think that there are, like, parts that work and parts that don't. But Last Christmas, at least for me, from beginning to end, was totally enjoyable. I love both the, the Scrooge part and the, the Louis part. Uh, the, the the Dewey part. Dewey Dewey part. Yeah. So. <laughs> Just go buy shirts, man. You can't go wrong that way. He even calls himself Bluey, which was yeah. Amazing. I, I I should stick to calling him Bluey. But yeah, yeah like as you as you said, Michelle, like this episode is all very feelsy, but like it also includes plot elements. I think that is the 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 A plot and B plot are both 
somehow they, they they both work together and they they mesh together at the end. So I, I just think that Last Christmas is like a, a well crafted episode from from beginning to end, and that's something that I, I feel like Ducktales, when it's at its best, is able to do that kind of stuff, where like it's able to affect you emotionally while still maintaining its normal version oh. of humor. So yeah. I, I think that th- yeah. that's what p- puts Last Christmas yeah. on like the top tier of Ducktales episodes. Yeah. So I I really loved it. And, and you know I'm. Just want to make sure, no difference from when I say, I think it's the best top quality episode. It's between, I think it's the top quality and, like, personal favorite. It might right. still be, but yeah, you know, just, you know, I, I, I could like episodes that I know is kind of lower quality and just enjoy them more, you know, in, like, in other shows, like in our other podcasts. So, get it. Mm-hmm. But like yeah. as you mentioned, like there, is, for example, like he has a personal favorite. Like there is a lot of uh, there's a different side of Donald that we haven't yeah. seen in this. Uh, uh, oh, in this emo Donald! Before. We're gonna talk about that. Well, oh, let, yeah. let, let, uh, let's go there first. I feel like I, I want to talk about Donald because <laughs> in, in, in oh, this finally. episode. Yeah, welcome for, to the club. Welcome to the flock. Well, I'm look, this, this this is a version of Donald I don't think I've ever seen or even considered in like a, what what is Donald like as a kid? Like, yeah, I never really think about it. And like here, he's portrayed as a as a weird emo kid, as uh, as Blue Bluey describes him. Uh, he's playing his guitar. He's got a Nirvana shirt on. And he's just very, very edgy. Uh, how, how, how did you guys feel? Do you guys see the progression from young Donald to where Donald is today? <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess kind of. I really, when I saw this and I saw a, a promo for it, this section, I was just so like, no, this can't be. No, this cannot be Donald. This is crazy. But then it was. And it's such a, I mean, I would have thought Donald would have been, like, a really quiet, timid kid for some reason, but this is such the opposite. And I guess, to your to your question, Alex, does this make sense for who he turns out to be in current times? I guess. I mean, if he isn't used to going with Ella on her adventures, maybe it's because of the going on adventures that he became more cautious over time. Um, so I guess that would make sense, but I love his, we can actually understand young him. That's such <laughs> yeah. a Different actor. His hair is great. Yeah. It's, I think it's a wonderful it's, take on his youth. So I'm here for it. Oh, and yeah, the duck formerly known as Donald. Oh, <laughs> I, I know that's, that's a character. That's his persona. Like one of the personas on the house of mouse. So I've seen Donald, like a whole lot of weird Donalds, but right. yeah, but I've never seen anything like this. And he's voiced by someone we might be familiar with from on our other show, Rusty Tyler. Um, and a coincidence, you know, voice of Storkules, he's the voice of Mickey mouse. And the voice of young Donald is the voice of Minnie mouse, the official voices right now. So That's yeah, all we need now, we need to get Bill Farmer and to voice a character in the future. Well, also notably, <laughs> Ru- Rusey Taylor is the one who voices the nephews in the original Duck Tales. Yeah, so like, yeah uh, that too. So I, yeah, I, I, know. I enjoy that that piece of content too. The fact that like young Donald is basically like, oh, the, the person who's connecting here. Yeah, but, and also, do you know the original nephews? Um, nephews originally they were voiced by the same guy, voice actor as Donald. So this sort of is full circle in a weird way. Yeah, mm. so, so like all, all um, young Donald also like we we talk about he's understandable in voice, but like the funny part is we are introduced him playing some song about how nobody understands oh, him. Oh, I is know, <laughs> it's so good, and it makes perfect fodder for an emo song. So it's just it's brilliant that this is the take they have of him as a teenager. Mm-hmm. Mm. And, I wonder what if. Mr. Jose and Panchito ever knew about his previous musical experiences. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> well, yeah, that, that does seem to be adding on to it, right? Like, this explains why, I guess, in college he already had musical tendencies, because as a kid he was just playing guitar to himself. Yeah. Uh, but also, in addition to young Donald, we see young De- Della Duck. Uh, she, we haven't seen Della in a while in this show, and we see her as a kid. Um, she's uh, a, a rebel, basically. Like, you just hu- yeah. she, is she hunting for Santa? Does she want to talk to Santa? I, I'm I don't know. What I think she wants is. to take him. It proves that he's real or something. She wants to trap him to study him, and I is think- like 
you know, because he never dies. Maybe think, she wants to learn about his immortality. <laughs> I think she just wants to show him to Uncle Scrooge to prove a point. But right, but I, I know about you, but she she was able to trap Donald and Dewey just like that. I don't know about you guys, but she definitely reminds me of Webby in a weird way. Mm. She's just super like wild and strong. It's I, I told Got you before. Gadgets. I told you before how we have these next generation counterparts, how Huey is like Findrith and Louie is like Gladstone and Dewey is like Donald. And I told you before, Della is pretty much the Webby of the previous generation. Even though well, Webby's not blood relative, but still. Well, and in this episode, they do kind of lay it on pretty thick, the Dewey and Donald comparison, because yeah. A, a, yeah. as Dewey is helping out Donald's like, hey, you shouldn't be abandoning your brothers, then he eventually like he's like, oh, wait, that me too. I need yeah. to apologize I, to my family I, and stuff. So that they do kind of lay that, lay that comparison uh, on, especially very heavily in this episode. I always thought Dewey was emo in his own way. <laughs> In his own way, I love that. Yeah, I'll support that headcanon. <laughs> well, Dewey is also the one who's most obsessed about uh, um, getting back with his mom or uh, with, like with, with Della, and like we also have like mm-hmm. weird time travel stuff where he has to avoid saying he's his mo- he's uh, Della is his mother, and so we get like his fifteenth cousin, t- third three times removed or some- something like that. This family is so confusing. <laughs> Yeah, such a good line from Donald. I, I'm pretty sure we, we've said that line on this podcast at some point <laughs> before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um and uh, and yeah, and with the with Della, the reason we talk about this advancing plot is because we see that both somehow Donald I think recognizes um that Louis has well, that uh, Dewey has uh, had time traveled because he says like welcome back. So I'm not sure if that's yeah. implying that he, he remembers oh, the time yeah. travel. Yeah. I I kinda wonder though, um, did Dewey able to slip some kind of warning, you know, in, in like Della's pockets or something? No. And that might ex- I mean that might explain how she's able to survive so long on the moon if she had at least able like pre- took a whole bunch of preparations whole bunch of food to last like how many years and st- stuff to fix the ship that is that is true i still mm. don't understand how Dell is not dead but maybe <laughs> they will reveal something like that so it's basically like back to the future then right steve yeah like, yeah like no, the- and he didn't and she kept it and then she looked at it anyway yeah. they were yeah. pretty adamant in the moment about not knowing about the future though both of them they just kind of like took it in stride that he was from the future which i think is also pretty well, hilarious well, if that is the case i kind of hope we need to let, like she would say to dewey i figured what the Heck, you know, mm. that, was a, and, that was a line from Back to the Future. Actually, though, heck is another word which we can't say okay. here. But <laughs> <laughs> And and uh, as we mentioned, like, Della is on the moon, and we do get our, our, our cut to her on the moon at the very end of this episode. And it's like, Happy Merry Christmas, you guys. See you soon. So it's like the episode reminding us, yeah, that Della's around. <laughs> yeah, she's event- plans. Like, she see you soon. That just means, what, are we going to have she's three coming? more episodes till she comes back? Mm, yeah. I figure into the season, but I, I, I can't wait for her to, to meet, like, some of the new characters. I can't, uh, new characters. I can't wait for her to meet Webby and Launchpad and. Yeah, I'm excited and- for the Scrooge and Donald reunion. That's going to be. Yeah. A- oh. yeah. Yeah, oh, and that's gonna be very I'm complicated. When they first thing, I'm hoping <laughs> very I hope, complicated. I need though the first when Donald and Dale reunite. I first thing Donald needs to say is Dumbella. Like, oh no, that, that's not terrible. a nice name. <laughs> yeah, I know, but that's a cute. I, I think that's more of a cute little like nickname. Like, <laughs> a no, cute, no. name. That D- D- well, you... doesn't consider it cute, so I no. also do not consider. Oh uh, well. It cute, so. Well, well, you do know there's a little difference. That was her original name originally when they created the character long ago. So that's a nice little reference there. But but you got to admit, though, she kind of deserves it, though. She was kind of dumb to go on that ship with. Wow. In a wow. <laughs> She's just that an adventurer a- who, like, does things impulsively. We don't have to call that <laughs> yeah. dumb necessarily. But <laughs> But uh, also, like, she she is very resourceful as we see her, like, building her ship back uh, on the moon. It, it does seem from, like, the brief stuff we see that she's got, like, a whole base at this point, but also that I don't think there's 
been enough progress on the ship to be for it to be the, very soon. But it, it's just funny that we just keep keep doing the cut to Della on the moon at the end of episodes. <laughs> I feel like that's this is like the third time already that mm. we've done something like that. Are we ever gonna encounter some aliens? Like, um, is she gonna encounter aliens? Are we gonna find some enemy enemy aliens and maybe good aliens? Hmm. Good question. Uh, Anything's it's, possible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, this show has so much like weird magic creatures and stuff that anything is possible. In, in this plotline, there's a, a, a monster called a Wendigo uh, that that was uh, causing some conflict in their story. Uh, and that ties in to the uh, to the A plot because the A uh, I guess I, I don't think there is an A plot. Part A, plot, just part, part, part A, A, part, yeah. part A, or yeah, part yeah, two parts. It's not different plots. It's just right one or two. <laughs> but like the the other half of this episode is focusing on Scrooge, and uh, uh, Scrooge is most famous in pop culture for not liking Christmas, right? I, I guess that's his most famous. <laughs> Like, for people who don't really follow Disney stuff, like, I guess the Christmas Carol is probably, like, Scrooge's most well-known appearance. So, like, here we also see him uh, uh, hating Christmas at the at the beginning, being very angry, railing against capitalism, as uh, I, ha- I have also done in the past regarding Christmas. But, um, You're a Scrooge in the making. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. But... <laughs> But like Scrooge, he le- he has learned how to party <laughs> on Christmas because uh, uh, it's, we see the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future in a reference to the Christmas Carol. But like the, he, in this version, he's he's friends with them and he parties with them at Christmas. Uh, um, it seems that they have a very wild party. I think that they're like in in his private room. Um, how, how did you guys feel about the about the ghosts in, the, in this episode? Mm, yeah, right. I liked them. Yeah, I liked them too. Uh, they're all bros. Just seeing Scrooge actually like Christmas was a very pleasant surprise. While he was like chugging eggnog, which was also kind of amusing. Mm. Yeah, and I think this is like more specifically a reference to a a Mickey's Christmas Carol. Right, I don't know if right. you've heard of that. Is yeah, it? I I just talked about that, so yes. Yeah, but. <laughs> You talking no? You talking about the, the Christmas Carol, the normal Christmas Carol? Oh no, I was referring to the Disney Christmas Carol. Okay, like, it's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> a bit more clear there, but yeah. And uh, kind of weird though. Uh, it seems Mrs. Beakley and the uh, Ghost of Christmas Future have a little thing going. <laughs> <laughs> were, were, you, were you shipping them? Oh, why not? I do know Mickey Christmas Carol, the Ghost of Christmas Future, is Pete. And Pete and Mrs. Beakley, that's something, not a ship I never thought about, but, hmm. Yeah, I love how she dumps one of them yeah. right in the moment and then sees death and is like, oh, hey, <laughs> do you want to dance? That nice cloak. Yeah, yeah, like a cloak. It's wonderful. Good for her. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess the general story of this begins as them taking Scrooge to his past parties and him wanting to get away from responsibility, but he ends up like just reliving those boring parties of like mm-hmm. him, him making business yeah. deals. Oh, Duckworth's um, still alive. Yeah, Duckworth is still alive. <laughs> yeah. um, Go- Goldie O'Gilt made an appearance. Yeah. Gold uh, Candlestick. Pa Beagle. Pa Beagle. Yeah, so I, I was going to ask, kind of where, where is Ma Beagle there? Like, is she there, or is she like, at home, or what's going on there? I don't know. I think, I'd like to think she's doing her own caper solo, and then when Pop Beagle, Beagle passes, she's like, ah, oh, well, gotta take on the rest of the business. I guess I can't mm-hmm. be solo anymore. And then mm-hmm. she just heads it up herself. I'm not even sure, though, if Pop Beagle's like her husband or her father. Um because we're not even sure about how long ago this is. We know uh, Scrooge and Goldie, they got this sort of immortality thing, so they don't True. age. So, so yeah. But the, there, been... there is young Mrs. Beakley, so, like, uh, yeah. it can't be that far. Like, well, I'm just glad, though, Scrooge's, like, past, like, love interest is Goldie and not ugh, Daisy, which is just so disgusting <laughs> to think about. That's like his okay. niece-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, <laughs> but and, and so eventually Scrooge is like, "Hey, I, I don't want to do this responsibility." And the present, I mean, and the, the ghost of Christmas past takes him to just a very alone place. Supposedly his first Christmas in Duckburg, 
And then, like, we get this twist that Christmas Past is actually the villain of this plot because he's trying to trap uh, Scrooge and because he's afraid that he's losing him to the actual family and that they're not going to party together anymore. I was a little surprised, but uh, admittedly, like, I haven't watched the Mickey's Christmas Carol, so, like, I know I, I'm pretty sure in there the ghosts are not good people necessarily but i was still for some reason oh. t- taken by surprise that we took this twist in the middle and well, I, the, I enjoyed it though but the ghost of christmas past that's jiminy cricket he's a great guy yeah i was like i kept thinking is this jiminy cricket or just looks oddly I, similar i, I, I forgot who the, i forgot who the ghost of christmas present was i know the ghost of the future was like that was mostly cloaked until at the end revealed himself to be pete but yeah i know i remember jimmy cricket he's always a nice guy he's not evil so were, were, you, were you taken by surprise by the cricket's turn here? <laughs> no. Okay. Fine. Were you? Th- <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll take I that silence as you were surprised. They but. they they were subtly building to it. I knew something was weird because after the part, the first party resulted in Scrooge having to deal with all these business people. It's like, oh, I guess we should go back home to my family and. The cricket's like, no, 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 we, we don't, we don't have to do that. And that was a little weird. So they were kind of planting a seed, but it was still a surprise because he's kind of really intense. Also, so he was the Wendigo, but like, that's not okay, Scrooge. That means it's been like years and years and decades and decades he's been alone trying to contact Scrooge. Not being able to go back to his mm. proper time. Like, that's kind of messed up for real. I feel a little bad for him. Mm. And, and it ends with, like, Scrooge is stretching out the umbrella. It's like, we, you never leave someone behind on Christmas. But that's what <laughs> you, you did. did for that. <laughs> you did that for years. <laughs> I don't know. He's the way to go now. Is he planning to go get him again? I, I think I he don't... legit forgot it. That's what I think happened. Oh, but it was so a build up, though, the fact that these ghosts were sort of neglecting their responsibilities and starting just tiring a party. So these were not your your father's ghosts of of Christmases. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, um, the, I, I, we've covered most, most of the, of the story, but like, uh, other random stuff, um, th- this episode had a special version of the DuckTales theme with like more Christmassy lyrics. Mm-hmm. Um, the, si- the singer was like, sounded like Frank Sinatra of, um, I don't, I don't know, I didn't check who actually did the singing there, but it, it was a ni- nice twist on it. And it's also, not Frank like, Sinatra. The, no, obviously it's not, but like, a good, a good imi- imitator, I think. And like, they're like, snow, snow, they're like snow, they're like snowflakes falling in the uh, behind the animation yeah. of the intro so that was cute um, um the scrooge uh, Hobble- Dad had an amazing version of the 12 days of christmas i yeah. just think we should oh. spend a little time to, to praise that for being amazing because whenever he forgot a verse he'd just be like eight days of christmas Seven days of Christmas. No, it's seven <laughs> samurai. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. And it, it, it ends with a cartridge of printer ink. <laughs> it's just like, you yeah. know, I can't understand. So many, like, that song is so long and so many sets to remember. I remember Partridge in a Pear Tree, and then after that, it's yeah, hard to remember. So I'm on, I am on Launchpack's side. I understand. He has my sympathy. Our- yeah, I think Launchpad version is actually kind of better because he just he just goes with the flow. Um, yeah, he's just riffing. Um, he's also, riffing, yeah. uh, also importantly with with regards to Launchpad, he is wearing a sweater with a menorah on it. So, uh, mm-hmm. is is Launchpad in universe Jewish? Yes, hmm. he's yeah. Jewish. Duck confirmed forever. I yeah, uh, I guess so. I never thought of it that if it was religion, but yeah. <laughs> Let's dig into the duck's religion for a second. <laughs> um, oh, oh, well, how get um? Let's not also forget um. Part I thought was kind of amusing was Louis' letter to Santa Claus. Like, oh, Santa Claus, I can explain. Yeah, I can explain. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it, this was mo- mostly a, a Dewey episode, but Louie Louis and Huey get a little bit of time in the in the beginning, and just in like in the family scenes, and they like hug oh, each other oh, and let's, stuff. Oh, let's also forget though, Donald kept that sweater all these years. Uh, mm-hmm. It was and, from when he got it. He's only yeah. finally grown into oh, it. And in part, when Young Donald says, 
she and Della would never spend another Christmas apart. Um, that that just gutted my heart. Yeah. It's right. And, and on rewatch, that that helps the scene where Louis is uh, in his room, uh, or Dewey is in his room, <laughs> and I, uh, I I wrote stuff wrong in the outline, guys. So like, apologies okay. that I keep <laughs> confusing Dewey and Louis. But <laughs> I feel like but, that is the day of my life. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, D- D- Dewey is uh, staring at the picture of his mom, and, and uh, Donald just butts in, like trying to cheer him up with, up with the Christmas carols. But then he realizes that he's staring at the picture of his mom and. Donald is very sad all of a sudden. Like that's just a, 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 a beautiful moment. Like you just keep reminding us, like Donald has re- been raising these kids for a long time. Like this still hurts him. And yeah. so I, I really like that the times when they take when they take the time to be quiet and emotional about things like that little and scene there. And I love seeing Happy Donald at the very beginning singing like Christmas songs. I mean pulling up that plastic snowman. I mean, that is not a Donald I'm used to seeing. I mean, I'll, or maybe because he mo- most of the time when I see him, he's like with Mickey and Goofy, and nobody can beat Mickey when it comes to perkiness. So not having Mickey there maybe makes him look much more happy. And, and also you wonder, like, because we, we see later that Donald and Della end up having this uh, relationship over Christmas. So maybe it's just like this time it makes him feel happy because it reminds him <laughs> yeah. of family moments, uh, things like yeah. that. Maybe, maybe that's the true meaning of Christmas. Right, I want to try to do a song. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle uh, bells. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a for effort. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's more easier to do emo Donald. Like, yeah. It's a, it's a challenge. <laughs> that, that, that was more accurate, though. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 speaking of uh, emo Donald, like one thing, we, uh, he does have his Donald rage from a very early age because his guitar gets broken by the monster, and he just like goes off on him, like starts like running all around and, his head. So, yeah. and you know, it just I something I realized here, but it seems that Donald and Del Della back then they lived with Scrooge, so that meant their par- they lost their parents at a very young age. And think a young man like Donald pretty much at this point he's he lost his entire immediate family. I mean what a dark life. That's why he's so overprotective of his nephews. Yeah, yeah. no, it's true. It does add another um, another layer to the whole because at the beginning of the series, that Donald is moving back in with with Scrooge, and it's tense. But like now, we know that also Donald had been living with Scrooge since very little uh, un- until they parted because of the Della stuff. So it's just a, it, it's an interesting thing to think about that like Donald spent almost all of his life at this point in the Scrooge so, castle. So Scrooge is like a, like a father figure, right? Yeah, so like that that adds extra stuff to the like whenever they have their tension stuff in the earlier episodes, if you think of it like that. Mm. Um, uh, any anything else that stood out to you guys from from the Christmas episode? Mm. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I just wish we could use some Jose Panchito and sing some Feliz Navidad. And, uh, <laughs> well, I, I actually, he's thinking I, big. Actually, I noticed that it, it, what like in the background, Donald is singing some Christmas carol, and the subtitle said "singing Christmas carol in Spanish." But like because it's Donald, I can't, I can't understand. <laughs> yeah, what I, don't, I don't. I don't know. I I thought the same thing. Alex is like, oh no, he's singing something. Can't understand it though. Actually, you know what we could have done at the end of the episode? We got into a whole like whole like go widespread montage of see other characters how they celebrate the holidays. Even the villains like Glomgold and, you know, Mark Beeks. And also maybe see Gladstone, what he's doing, and Feathery. At the very least, let's see Gladstone and Feathery. Let's pan to them and see them, how they celebrate the holidays. Well, sure. But I think that this ending is a lot better because yeah. I care most about Della of all these <laughs> side characters. So, like, I want to see that she's alive. So, I, I think that <laughs> so the ending that they chose was very effective, yeah. uh, considering what we had been building in it, within the episode. At the very least, could we have seen the Beagles family Christmas? Let's see what they're doing. <laughs> Next year. they Next they got to keep coming up with Christmas specials yeah. for years to come. Right, right. We, we, we always have season four or whatever <laughs> they do it next time <laughs> um but yeah the the be, 
this uh, episode aired just this weekend, but a couple, uh, I guess two or three weeks ago, was also airing uh, Storkeles and Duckburg. And at the beginning, we talked about Storkeles being fun, and I uh, we he had appeared last appeared in the Spear of Selene, which was actually a plot episode for for a bit. But like this one isn't that much. It's more of a like just focused comedy episode. But yes, so Storkeles is great. At least to me, what what do you guys feel about Storkeles in here, or like funniest moments of of this episode? I can't believe they redid the gag of Donald getting stuck in Storkeles' cleavage when they first meet each other. But that's never going to be old for me. I'm always (laughs) going to appreciate that. So thank you, storyboard artist. That was wonderful. Oh, well, yeah, I just love it too. I mean, he's kind of like uh, Donald's like boyfriend, right? Yeah, he yeah, loves him so much. And I love how he says, "Much money, my f- friendship and love is the pace of my." Oh, <laughs> yeah, it does. Like, no, I need cold hard <laughs> cash, please. <laughs> and that's showing you Donald is definitely related to Scrooge, right there. <laughs> uh, also, it doesn't fit. Like uh, we we talk about Donald being chipper in the Christmas episode, but his usual state is a little yeah. bit uh, curmudgeonly. So like going against well, Storkeles, who's like well, a ray of sunshine Stork- all the time. Well, at least with Storkeles, <laughs> yeah, it's that way. Well, at least with Storkeles, when he's with Storkeles, maybe when he's not there, maybe being as chipper. But like I said before, Storkeles is voiced by the voice of Mickey Mouse, so I guess that works. I guess that's a reference, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Mickey on the show, by the way, they, the creator said yeah. we can't get him. Disney's not going to let him be on the show, so okay, <laughs> that's um, the closest we're going to get. Uh, other moments of Storkley's that that happen. Well, I, I guess the, the the basic explanation of this episode is Storkley's gets kicked off of his island because he needs to learn how to be a, a responsible adult, uh, similar to the story of Thor from the Marvel movies, basically. Oh. Except Storkley's is like a more fun Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. But uh, um, it doesn't have any evil little brothers, so not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> we, can, we can always uh, write that in later. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he shows up to to rent out Donald's uh, houseboat's uh, spare room. Uh, he is also helping cook around. Uh, he has an apron that spells you can't spell deity without diet, which is uh, just. <laughs> I like f- fun cooking when people want to cook for other people and they they stink at it. Oh. And it's all like smoky oh. and stuff. It's, it's a time it's honored like, gag. It's like that old. It's like that old Neil Simon play, The Odd Couple. Like he's the Felix and Donald is the Oscar. Yeah, they are basic opposites. So like, <laughs> you, you really can't go wrong with the, with the joke episodes like that. Um, the, there, there's this one moment where historically he's hired by by Louis as part of this continuing like business thing, and that they figure out that one business they can do is. Uh, Corralling these harpies that are chasing Storkeles. But they do this commercial of Storkeles dressed as a baby, Webby is a dad, and Huey as the mom. That was mm-hmm. uh, fascinating. Yeah. Webby makes a good dad. That's my hot take. I guess he does. She does. And she yeah. is probably stronger than Huey, and Huey's probably the most feminine of all the kids on the on the show, so it kinda works. Uh I want to know how. To, I guess Storkeles is a bit naive, obviously, but like, uh, how do you convince him to wear a diaper? You tell him it's the leading role, and he's like, yeah. "Oh yes, I will act the heck out of this baby part. I'll yeah. be amazing." Yeah, and you also say it's for Donald. It's what oh, Donald's sake. Yeah. It's going to yeah. benefit him some way. Lead role, and Donald will see it. He would do anything for Donald, man. He would. He would dive headfirst into a volcano for Donald. <laughs> Yeah. And we really think about it. The whole reason he is so adamant about helping out on the Harpies thing is so that he can get the money to pay Donald so he can stay with him. So it all really goes back to Donald. Yeah. Yeah, he's an I uh, he's the most very honest character on the show, probably. The most so he's Transparent, just the most, yeah. he's the most innocent. Maybe even more than Webby. <laughs> Yeah, yeah because, uh, he is more than Webby, for sure. <laughs> yeah, because in in the first episode, also, like, he's going against his father, who wants to, like, beat up Scrooge, but he he's just like, I just want to have fun, sort of thing. So, like, <laughs> uh, that's just kind of his character, happy-go-lucky, but, like, uh, here he's learning that he has to, like, 
pay, pay stuff. And so he gets sad when the business falls apart and like he doesn't have the cash anymore to, to pay Donald's rent. And to, he, so th- th- that was also fun, fun to like finally see directly sad. Uh, I don't know, like because he's like all happy and energetic the entire time. So it, it stands out a little more when, he, when they bring him down a notch. I kind of want. I wonder um, how much. I wonder how much Donald charges for rent. I wondered yeah. that too. It's such close quarters. I feel like he probably charged a bit more than normal. Maybe well, like eight hundred a month. I don't know what the normal, you know, cost of living prices are in Duckburg, but I feel like yeah. Donald could really use the extra cash. So. And then there's the whole other angle of this being a spare room on a houseboat. Like, uh, <laughs> yep. I, I I don't know if like houseboats are more expensive, less expensive, or like what 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 is the deal with, with like living on a boat? And does Donald have a permit to live there? Don't you have to get a permit maybe to make like a house pool a residence? Yeah, but it's Scrooge's property, so yeah. they have an agreement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And if if you rent at Donald's boat, then do you get access to the Scrooge Mansion's amenities? I don't think so. I think those are super yeah. separate. You gotta get Scrooge's approval there. I... Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Well, I guess that is, that may explain why Donald is not maybe still very messy because he has to stick to the boat. Well, he but, kind of uh, also wants his independence, as we saw in the Christmas episode. He kind of yeah, he's sort of a yeah, he's a free spirit. Yeah, he wants to live in his filth like a real adult <laughs> with his own choices. And Storkles must learn that this is also what responsibility means to <laughs> live independently, even if it is on a small boat. But uh, um, and uh, this episode, uh, aside from being Storkles, it's also focusing a lot on on Louis, the, our green shirt. Um, but he's we're continuing this uh, business storyline where he's uh, sh- spouting buzzwords at, at uh, Scrooge, but without knowing what to do. He starts up this business, but he ends up spending all the money he earns on on merchandise, and so merchandise. that ends up failing. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know how, how you guys feel about L- Louis in this episode. I, I personally was just kind of like whatever about it, just because mm. like, the, the Louis business stuff is not something that's that interesting to me, or they I haven't done know. it. They haven't done enough to make it meaningful. But I don't know about you guys. Mm. I didn't yeah. mind it. I thought I was curious to see if he's gonna be able to find an actual successful business. And I do think Harpy gone. He could have done worse. At least he was making five hundred per you know heist thing for a while mm-hmm. and didn't didn't it shift into kind of like a ghostbusters type of yeah mode? somewhere in the middle there the i monta- feel like that happened <laughs> well the commercial definitely was very yeah. ghostbusters yeah and, for sure and poor glom gold man oh <laughs> i know <laughs> they, they like save him he's like i'm not paying anything and then he's like okay let him go and then he just gets carried away <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he 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 likes to get thrown away by things. It's, it's like a similar thing that happened to him in the in the Shadow War. Like the shadow. Oh just man, that's t- true. Flies him through the sky and drops yeah. him in the ocean. Maybe so. he's used to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and uh, as uh, as Steve mentioned earlier, Web- Webby is uh, training these harpies on the side with with lemons and mm-hmm. uh, eventually getting them to uh, follow orders like a dog. Uh, th- yeah. There's a moment where Louis tries to take credit for it, and Webby just like punches him or, or kicks him over the hour. Oh, yeah, she is the strongest of them all of all the kids. She's definitely way stronger than her nephews. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the and the the climax of this episode is that Starkly's because the harpies steal whatever the person loves the most, and Starkly's is like, well, I cherish Donald's friendship the most, and so the oh, harpies oh. take yeah. Donald and his houseboat into the sky. Yeah. Um, so they, but, I'm surprised they didn't go after the money bin. Like that's what Scrooge cherishes the most. Scrooge was just like off screen for the yeah, whole time. Yeah, like he and... wasn't in proximity to the harpies, so I guess yeah. they didn't pick up on that. <laughs> yeah, he he makes the reference like I was at Cape Suzette with a business opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> it was like explaining to the audience why he wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and so th- we have the scene of Storkles and, and Louis going to save Donald uh, from falling off. Donald and Storkles have a big hug at the end uh, with with mm-hmm. cleavage involved. Uh, uh, Louis. I guess the idea Louis is tossing his merchandise to the harpies because that's what he values the most. Is that the idea? Mm. I guess. Um, 
Sure. <laughs> By the way, it, 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 it was a little confusing to me, but I think that's what they were trying to get across. I, 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 I kind of wondered, though, is Webby in his train of heartbeats, would they eventually be able to learn to speak? Because in the old, in the old cartoon and in, in the comics, the heartbeats were actually like humanoids. They actually talked like like the ducks do. So, so you're saying they're going to evolve with lemons? Yeah. Why not? Cool. <laughs> I mean, th- th- this lemonade could be in, in, uh, infected with something, so like it's possible. Yeah, keep them acid lemon blood. That would be a cool power. You want me to tell you something though? What happened in the original show? One of the harpies had a crush on Launchpad. Huh. <laughs> what did they do away with that? Because Launchpad could do better. He's got like three boos, right? Yeah, I'm just <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, Launchpad though, he is like a. He is a chick man, and he just gets so many girls to fall in love with him. He's like, he got his own harem. And so here's here's the question. Spe- speaking of Launchpad, how different are Launchpad and Storkel is really? Mm. I don't know. Like I feel like Storkel. I don't know. Storkel is like more funnier. I, that might be a controversial take, but I feel like Launchpad has a lot more comedic gold than. Starkeles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Stark is just a character like who you can't really have see too often because he, he, yeah, he's fine in small dosage. But if he's come over a current character, I think they might run out of things for him to do eventually. Yeah, well, my my thing is, I think that Starkeles and Launchpad are pretty much the same character, just that Starkeles is more eloquent. But like, other than that, like they're both very innocent. They both kind of just say what's on their mind. They don't really like lie. So like, it's uh, funny you say that. They're, they're both comedy, the comedy side characters that are very large and that love Donald. So it's like, funny there's, you, there's a lot of similarities. It's funny you say that because for years people have been saying Launchpad was sort of. Is similar to Donald for some reason. Well, it's, in this version, not at all. I, I think that yeah. Donald is his own character. But yeah, uh, yeah so just, just to me, like just thinking about it now, like you have Launchpad in the Christmas episode and Storkley's in, in this episode, and I feel like they serve a very similar purpose in the show. Yeah. Let's see, anything else here? Uh, Dewey Do Night makes a reappearance. Uh, De- Dewey's uh, late yeah. night show that he hosts in his closet. Oh, and he's interviewing Louis. I thought it was so like, canceled. Good to see he got some real guests on his show, and not it's, just himself. And still, Glongo has yet to appear on the show. Give it time. <laughs> I mean, he just came back just, just in time to, to yeah. interview Louis, and uh, now <laughs> and now that's gone. But um, yeah. So with that, I think we've covered most of, of these episodes. Um, any final thoughts you guys have on on these two before we begin signing off? Well, just uh, I guess Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy New Year's, and everything. Okay, very very, very <laughs> festive ending. Of <laughs> the Um, I'm excited for more plot stuff. I think at this point. Oh, also, so. Is Lena just never coming back ever? Oh, I, I yeah. feel like we'd see her by now if she was. Oh well, like I said, they he revealed that she's going to be there appear in season two in, at Comic Con. So mm, we'll see. Unless someday. it's the ultimate troll. The ultimate I mean, troll. That would be the ultimate troll. <laughs> well, also it's funny that we get a Della. We we finally get a Della cut off at this point, like six episodes in. So like. Lena can't be too far behind because I yeah. think those are the two main so. plot stuff that's yeah. hanging from the season yeah, we, finale. We also and, have, and Magica, I guess. Yeah, we, needs to be. And she's in the opening. Somewhere. Magica's in the opening. You have yet to see her, so you know, give it time. Yeah, uh, it, with these weekly episodes, like it feels a lot longer than, than other shows that we cover. Anyway. And this but, is uh, probably going to be the last show of the year, and probably who knows when it's going to come back. Because sometimes when Disney show they go on the holiday breaks, it can last a bit when it comes to Disney. So, right. The, the, uh, as of the Wikipedia article, there are no scheduled episodes at the moment, so it'll probably be a while. 
Um, and th- as this is the last episode of the year, I guess we can briefly talk about what what the best episode of the year is. We, we've we've covered a lot of stuff. Like the Spear of Celine aired this year, if you can believe it. <laughs> like oh. that was a long t- like twenty episodes ago. But like uh, since then, what what do you guys think has been the episode? If we're to say like what Ducktales in twenty eighteen has been at its best, what what episode would you guys point to? Do you think? Hmm. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm biased because, but I think maybe the uh, other money bin is of the other money bin probably because yeah, because I love Lena. Fun. It's a big Lena episode, and um, and, and Lena's a, one of my favorite characters in the show. So maybe I'm a bit biased there. Um, I know I love Donald too, but you know he hasn't really had that big Donald episode just yet. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, Michelle, <laughs> what, what what would you proffer up? <laughs> <laughs> Money Bin was really good. I'm also scrolling through because I forgot what the names of some of them are. Was the Sun Chaser um, episode? S- Sun Chaser uh, is mine. Like, I, yeah, I, Sun, I, Sun I, Chaser was also really great. I think I'm a first season, those two probably. And I think, honestly, for second season, the most dangerous game night is still my favorite overall. Mm-hmm. Just it, The pacing was so good. There were so many good jokes. It was such a tight, engaging episode. Mm-hmm. I like oh all, all, all around quality was just yeah. stellar, but you know these are personal opinions. So mm-hmm. yeah, no, I, I, and uh, I would also agree. Like the Sun Chaser is a really good episode to highlight the the emotional like you know, high points of the of what Ducktales is capable of, especially mm-hmm. like the ending with like seeing Scrooge broken up and stuff. And uh, honestly, la- last Christmas, I think, is is an episode that you could point to as like one of the high points of, of mm-hmm. the show because like it does a good job of both the Scrooge story and the nephew story because I feel like ne- nephew stories so sometimes they are like a lot of the time we kind of like brush them off as like lower tier, but like in this episode because it involves like Donald and and Della too, so like that helps the the episode's case and then mm-hmm. Scrooge is yeah. also fun as well. And you have family – like the, this show, it's at its best when it does the family stuff because I feel like that's a theme that's been there from the very beginning and it knows how to hit that so, very well. I'm just, so I, yeah. I think that those two episodes are the ones that I, I would point I'm, to. I'm hoping, though, we get to explore Webby's parents, whatever happened to them. Um, that's a story yet to be told. And I'm really not sure if her and Mrs. Beakley are related by blood. <laughs> Could be something there. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, we, we can just keep adding branches to the family tree. That that's no problem. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so un- until we next year probably we'll be back to talk more more Ducktales. Um, mm-hmm. If you want to catch up with uh, other shows that we cover here at Overly Animated in the meantime, you can do that at OverlyAnimated.com. You can also join us on Discord if you want to yeah. chat with us about Ducktales or any other animated shows. Yes. That OverlyAnimated.com slash Discord. We got Steven Universe um, coming up. Uh, yeah, so yep. we, have, we have a lot, a lot of shows to to point to: <laughs> Steven Universe, Rappos Ladybug, Ruby, like lots of stuff going on. A uh, Disney, uh, actually, the, the connection Wreck It Ralph too. We we recently did, we recently did a podcast on that. The voice of Christmas Past in this episode is Jack McBrayer, who also voices Felix in the Wreck It Ralph mm. movie. So oh yeah, but um, so you can also support us financially via Patreon at patreon.com slash overly animated. Uh, thanks to all, all of our current patrons. Especially our patron of the podcast, Katrin, aka Patron Katrin. Uh, thanks as always to our uh, Patreon executive producers, John Ryan, Stephen Hugh. And uh, yeah, until we have more DuckTales to talk about, we'll be back to, to discuss them. But uh, until then, we'll, we'll talk to you later. Adios. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.